Hello there and welcome to the Wondershare eDrawSoft channel. If you're eager to master the architecture of software design, you've arrived at the perfect destination. Today, let's learn about UML class diagrams. And we're not just going to decode complex concepts, but to demystify them and transform them into straightforward navigable instructions that you can follow with ease. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be more than just familiar with these diagrams. You'll be proficient in using them to meticulously plan and effectively communicate your software projects. So let's join forces and embark on this journey here today together. Imagine you're tasked with building a complex software system. Where would you begin? Just like an architect uses blueprints to outline a building structure, software developers use UML class diagrams to map out the system's architecture. These diagrams are not just drawings, but strategic tools that provide immense benefits. The diagrams serve as a visual reference that ensures all stakeholders have a unified understanding of the project structure. This clarity is crucial as it prevents misinterpretations and reduces errors, which can both save time and money during the development process. UML class diagrams act as a common language that bridges the gap between technical and non-technical stakeholders. By presenting complex software structures in an understandable format, these diagrams facilitate better understanding and discussions and decision-making across the entire team. With a well-planned class diagram, adding new features or updating existing ones becomes much easier. These diagrams allow developers to see the potential impact of changes on the system, making maintenance more predictable and less disruptive. Next, let's decode the symbols of our UML city map. Each element has its unique role. Classes. These are the primary structures within our diagram depicted as rectangles. Each class represents a different entity within your system as a user or a product. The rectangle is divided into compartments that include the class name at the top, followed by attributes and methods. Attributes are the characteristics or properties of a class similar to the specifications of a building such as its height or the materials used. In a UML diagram, attributes like username or price detail the kind of data that the system handles within each class. These are the functionalities or operations that each class can perform akin to the services a building provides. Methods such as add product or delete user define the actions that can be taken on the data, essentially describing how the system operates. By clearly defining and organizing these elements, UML class diagrams help developers visualize the roles and responsibilities within a software system, facilitating a better understanding and more efficient design process. In any architecture, not every area is meant to be accessed by everyone. And the same applies to our software architecture. In UML class diagrams, visibility is indicated by symbols. First is public plus. These elements are like the main entrances of a building, open to anyone. Public attributes and methods can be accessed by any part of the system, private minus. These are represented by areas like private offices, private elements are restricted and can be only accessed within the class itself. This restriction is crucial for safeguarding sensitive data and functionalities from external misuse. Protected hashtag. These are like semi-private workspaces where access is actually only granted to specific personnel or derived classes, ensuring that sensitive areas are not only overly exposed, but still within certain contexts, they are functional. Similar to areas accessible only to people from the same department, Package private elements are accessible within the same package, offering a moderate level of visibility and protection. Our UML city is interconnected not just by buildings, but by the pathways that link them. These are the relationships between classes. Association. Represented by a simple line, this relationship is like a street that allows traffic or data to flow between two classes. For example, an association between a customer and an order class indicates that customers can place orders. Inheritance. Illustrated by a line ending with a hollow triangle, inheritance is like historical building guidelines that newer structures must adhere to. This relationship allows a subclass to inherit attributes and methods from a superclass, promoting reusability and consistency in the system. Aggregation and composition. These are depicted by hollow and filled diamonds respectively and represent different levels of dependency. Aggregation is like a shopping center where individual stores exist independently yet form part of a larger complex. 
Composition, however, suggests a stronger bond, like a building with rooms that cannot exist separately from the main structure. These relationships help manage complexity by grouping related classes, simplifying the overall design and functionality of the system. Step one, identify the class names. Identify the primary objects of the system. Step two, distinguish relationships. Determine how each of the classes or objects are related to one another. Look out for commonalities and abstractions among them. This will help you when grouping them while drawing the class diagram. And step three, create the structure. You can start by adding the class names and linking them with the appropriate connectors. You can add attributes, functions, methods, or operations later. Now let's see a few examples of class diagrams in Wondershare eDraw Max. If you go into Wondershare eDraw Max and go to more, we can go here and click on software development. And then from there, we just have to select the proper template. So let's select the UML class diagram. And we can start from scratch by clicking on blank drawing. And as you can see, the UML class diagram components are gonna be here on the left-hand side. And you can use these different components to make them as you'd like and connect them together as well. And if you wanted to use a specific template, you absolutely could as well by clicking on one of these templates. This works here too for any of these. So I spent some time just building this inside of Wondershare. You can utilize these different components to make that happen. And always remember, you can make adjustments to this however you'd like um, in the styling. There's always a design adjustment that can be made on the top here if you'd like to make any changes to this diagram. All right, now let's go to view and take an entire look at this page. Now let's view this and I'm gonna explain to you this UML diagram. After finishing, let's look into a few elements of the diagram. We have classes, which are a blueprint for an object, attributes, values that define a class, associations, symbolizes the relationship between classes, multiplicity, which is used to determine how many times an attribute occurs, operations, which describes how a class interacts with data. Aggregation represents a unilateral relationship between classes. Role, which models the instances of classes in more detail. Abstract class, a template definition of methods and variables of a class that contains one or more abstracted methods. Generalization, a relationship in which one model element, the child, is based on another model element, the parent. And now let's see a few examples of class diagrams available in eDraw Max. This one is a UML class diagram for online shopping systems. It illustrates the relationship within a credit card transaction system. So let's just take a look at this guy. Awesome, very cool. Now, let's take a look at this one right here, which is available online as well. This one is for HR management. It shows the relationships between admin, department, employee, leave, payroll, and the HR system. And this is a chat apps UML class diagram which depicts how users can join several chat or group conversations, whereby messages and notifications are attached both to users and chat groups, providing a blueprint for developing an organized and developed chat app. So as we wrap up, remember that mastering UML class diagrams is akin to becoming a skilled city planner in the world of software development. These diagrams are not just tools, but gateways to building robust, efficient, and scalable applications. Thank you so much for joining us in this tutorial with Wondershare eDraw Max. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and check the description for a link to try eDraw Max online or download it. See you until the next one.